get that one. They got another one to follow it up. Two straight wins now for Penn State. The offense rounding into form as we've been talking about. Ohio State is in town for a whiteout on Saturday night. It should be great. James Franklin, the head coach, is joining us now. And, Coach, you guys are coming off a bye. So first thing I guess I, I want to ask you is what did you get out of that bye week? How important was it for you? Well, I think just time more than anything. Uh, most important thing, you know, we've been a little bit banged up. Uh, lost seven linebackers at the linebacker position. Um, real challenging from that perspective. Lost one of our offensive tackles last week. Uh, but overall, you know, just the time, time to develop the young players, um, allow the older guys to get some rest, and then also get, um, you know, some recruiting done. So it was really effective. I do want to ask you, you talked about the linebackers and all the injuries you've had there, which has just been crazy. I mean, unlike anything I've ever seen at one position, where are you now? Have, have you gotten some guys into shape where you think they could be back this week? Well, the good thing is the young players that have been playing have gotten a lot of experience, a lot of reps, and we found a way to win two important football games uh, with inexperienced players. And now we're getting some of those guys back. You know, um, the only thing I would say is these guys haven't played in four weeks. Um, and it's not like they've been practicing and not just playing games. They haven't played at all. So uh, to think that they're going to come back and go from starters to now come back and be starters again and play 60 reps a game, probably not going to happen. But they'll have roles. Um, you know, we expect to have Kabinda back in some role. We expect to have Bell back in some role. We expect to have Cooper back in some role. So being down seven linebackers now to be back you know, four, uh, being down four, um, that helps. The run game was just outstanding against Maryland. It feels like Matt Limegrover's getting that offensive line together. We've been impressed with him for years, going back to his time at Minnesota. Where have you seen the most progress in the O-line? Well, Matt's done a nice job, and um, you know he also came here at the right time. I mean, uh, you know we're at a much different point now than we were two years ago. Matt's experience, uh, Matt's knowledge, Matt's temperament has been really good for us. Um, been very, very pleased with that. Uh, but we got some young guys that are really coming on. I mean, we lost uh, Andrew Nelson, um, who's been a very, very good player for us for the last couple of years, and it's nice to see um, you know Paris come in and, and Paris played pretty well at left tackle, who was a starter for us. The, the previous year so we're starting to kind of create some depth um, and then the fact that you know Trace McSorley mobile quarterback is making plays with his legs that that's a major factor in this as well yeah, I want to follow up on that how does his ability to run change your offense well it changes everything I mean you know now not only do you have to defend um, Saquon Barkley in a traditional running game um, but then you also have to deal with the run pass options um, and, the, and the ability for the quarterback to pull the ball and throw it or for the quarterback to pull it and run it out the back back end that helps and then you just have you know actually design quarterback runs so you know now defensively you got to stop the receivers passing game with the tight ends you got to stop a traditional running game you got the run pass options and then you have the quarterback it's just a lot of things to manage and I sit in with our defensive coaches all the time watching tape on on other teams and that's that's difficult that makes it you know just one more thing that you have to game plan for and you have to prepare for along those lines I know you've been watching Ohio State's offense as we spin it forward to the game this weekend what makes that group so difficult to defend well, they're good up front, which, which really helps. Their center guard combination, I think, is as good as anybody in the country. Uh, they got an experienced quarterback who's won a lot of games for them, and JT Barrett, uh, very poised, very athletic, very under control, playmaker. Um, he's, he's, he's seen a lot and, and been very successful uh, and a talented player. I, I, I love watching the guy play, you know. So although they're young, whenever you have experience and productivity like they do at the quarterback position, that really helps. Um, you know, the running back's playing really well, Weber right now, you know, Samuel is a playmaker for him, probably similar in some ways that Percy Harvin was for Urban in, in, in his previous uh, job, um, you know, and then they're talented at wideouts. So they got a lot of weapons, they've recruited really well, um, and, uh, you know, they're using them effectively right now. James, we talked about how good you guys have been at home. We've seen the students already camping out. We had some video of it yesterday on BTN Live. How important is the home crowd in this game? 
I mean, whenever you play the number two team in the country, I mean, these guys are good. I mean, obviously, they're, they're a good football team. So uh, we're going to need everybody. You know, we talk about 107,000 fans, which very few you know, programs in the country are able to do that. But we're going to need every clap. We're going to need every scream. We're going to need every yell, um, you know, because we're not going to be able to do this by ourselves. It's going to have to be the whole community coming together to do something special Saturday night against uh, one of the better football teams in the country. The head coach of the Penn State Nittany Lions, James Franklin. Coach, always appreciate your time. I know it's a busy week. Thanks for taking a few minutes with us here. Guys, thank you so much. I like the purple tie, but I, I, I like you better in blue. <laughs> you know, you can't wear blue every single <laughs> show. I mean